What is up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Stand Your Ground. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Stand Your Ground. I'm your host, as always, Alex. Uh, and you might notice something a bit different this week. Uh, there's no guests on for Stand Your Ground this week. Uh, that is mainly because this is going to be a very quick video. It's more of an update video of where we want Stand Your Ground to go uh, and to get some suggestions and some comments from you, the people that are tuning in, to see what they want to see on stand your ground um but before we do get into that of course i'm going to run a quick promo video and tell you how you can get yourself a discount and free shipping at manscape.com <laughs> Yeah, that's right, guys. Thanks to the guys over at manscaped.com. You can use code SYG2020 and get yourself 20% off and free delivery. Uh, make sure you use that code and get yourself uh, a nice bit of equipment. They've got a lovely three uh, lawnmower 3.0, which is absolutely fantastic. Guarantees no snags, no cuts, and is perfect ahead of the Valentine's Day period. Uh, I've already got a few comments. Um, Gary, yo, what's up, Gary? How's it going? Uh Josh, I want my hoodie. Wrong show. Get back to whatever you were doing. Um, this is a bit of a strange video for me to do, especially seeing that I'm doing it on my own. I think um, anyone can appreciate that doing a live video by themselves is a bit weird. Um, the comments is probably going to really help because you're used to bouncing off other people, how they speak, what, what questions come up. Um, but... This is more aimed towards the viewers, what people want to see, because we've seen a rapid decline in people that have been watching Stand Your Ground, uh, in all honesty, and I want to know more from the fans what they want to see. What would entice people to come and watch? Is it too long? Is the stand, um, running down of shows? Oh, not running down shows, sorry. Running down the games and what's happened over the weekend just too basic, too normal? Do you want more theme-specific things? So uh, just let us know in the comments below. I am going to speak about a few things football-related before we do go, so this isn't going to be one of those weird videos where I just end it and ask for your comments. Um, the first thing that I do want to talk about, Lampard's dismissal from Chelsea. Now, this is going to be a big topic because a lot of people have had... Um, a lot of comments and a lot of theories as to why Lampard failed at Chelsea and if he is a decent manager, if whether he's been hyped up because of the fact that he was a Chelsea legend, an England legend, or whether or not um, he would even succeed in a managerial role. Because let's be honest, his Derby County year, although he got them to the playoff final and that, that in itself is a good achievement, yeah, but to take a team who'd already finished sixth and finish sixth isn't a great achievement. I don't think that's something that Chelsea should have been looking at and going, oh, yeah, we should take him. Fair play, he got Chelsea fourth last year and got on Champions League football. That's also in itself a really good um, achievement for Lampard to have under his belt. But then the first season that he gets uh, a bit of money to be able to spend, splash out on players, uh, Chelsea for, uh, fallen short. And it's come out today from their game against Burnley where they won 2-0. Um, 
they've moved to seventh, which is somewhere that Chelsea should nowhere be near, especially not after the millions and millions that were threw in the summer transfer window. Um, so I'd be interested to hear people's thoughts on what they think about Lampard as a manager, whether they think uh, Chelsea doing their normal thing of getting rid of a manager quite quickly, um, or whether they should have given Lampard a bit more time, should have let him gel with the players a bit more, or if it is a case of he just wasn't the right fit and maybe Thomas Duchel that's come in will get Chelsea firing all, all cylinders. He already has that um, experience of top management with PSG and Borussia Dortmund. Uh, he's managed some great players and maybe that German connection between him, uh, Kai Havertz and Timo Werner is just what they need to start adapting to the Premier League style. Um, another bit of news as well before we jump to the comments if anyone does want to say anything about anything um Demar gray from leicester is another um young english prospect that has joined by leverkusen today uh, on an undisclosed fee so another young teenage uh english player going out over to the bundesliga to try and try his hand at getting some first team football another player that i actually really did enjoy watching. I thought Demar Gray was a great player. Um, maybe he's, he's suffered with um, playing at Leicester because they've had su such good attacking options through the years. Maybe he's struggled to break into that first team, but I think he'll do well over at Leverkusen, but I think this also opens up the options for uh, Leon Bailey to leave by Leverkusen at the end of the summer. Um, whether he'll stay in the Bundesliga and go to like Bayern Munich where most of the decent by uh, Bundesliga players go or whether he'll venture in, into a different league is yet to be seen. I think he was rumoured to be linked with like Arsenal and and I think at one point Leeds as well, which Leeds could probably I mean they don't really need another winger to Leeds, let's be honest, with all the wingers that they keep signing. Um but I, I'd be interested to see Leon Bailey in the Premier League. I think he'd be a decent fit for um, any team, realistically. I think he's a good uh, player with the ball. I think he's got a great dribbling ability. I also think that maybe um, Arsenal could do with him because the signing of Willian has just dropped. It's not what people expected of Willian. Um, or maybe it is. Cause some people did say it's, it's just like Arsenal to sign uh, a player at the end of his career for a big wage. So, um, also want to talk about the Premier League table in itself. Now, Man City currently sit at the top of the table. One, uh, they got a one nil win at Sheffield United this weekend and moved another two points ahead of Man United, who are in second because Man United dropped points playing Arsenal, got a nil nil draw. I think the top spot for Man City is probably wrapped up. I think they will take top spot in the Premier League and will again win the Premier League this year. Uh, Man, City, uh, Man United, on the other hand, I think will probably drop from second. Third, again, would, wouldn't be a bad season for Man United. Um, although we have been top of the table and it was nice to see Man United back at the top of the table for the first time since uh, Sir Alex Ferguson left. They're still not the team that needs to be there. They're not the team that are going to win a league anyway, in, in my opinion. I think they've got good attacking uh, options and I think Bruno Fernandes is one of the best attacking midfielders in the world. I won't say he is the best because I'm pretty sure that'll cause a bit of a stir in the comments. Um, but I think it's between him and uh, Kevin De Bruyne. But other than that, our Man United's depth is not great. Our centre-back roles, I mean, we're relying on Harry Maguire being able to pull that defence through. I think Wan Bissaka is one of the best right backs in the in the world, defensively, not attacking wise. I think defensively, one on one defensive situations, I think he's one of the best in the Premier League at least. Uh, and I think Luke Shaw and Alex Tellers, the switch between the two of them is has been has proved vital really 
because Shaw can't play 90 minutes for 38 weeks. It just he's he's just got those little niggling injuries that just last and they keep coming back to haunt him. So I think um, having Tellers as the second option or even just a rotational system between the two of them is, a, is great for us. But that second centre-back role really needs to be nailed down. I thought Eric Bay played really well. He got dropped as soon as Lindelof's injuries uh, cleared up. And I think if we get a second centre-back, maybe Upa Meccano from Leipzig, would be a good shout. I, I don't want to splash the money out on Rafael Varane because I think again he's very much like um, Harry Maguire. Um, that he's just got uh, too many mistakes in him, and I think we need a more solid defender that's able to play with the ball. Uh, Jack, three one up, the wise Bamford's on fire. You know. Fair play to Leeds. They, they, did, they had a really good game against Leicester today. Um, when Harvey Barnes originally scored that first goal, I thought maybe, maybe they'll uh, they'll fall short again. Maybe Leicester's counter attacking options will be too much. But you saw that Leicester really missed Jamie Vardy up top. Um, Leeds, on the other hand, looked good in patches, but it weren't. They weren't at the best. I think they really... Bamford came alive in the second half. After that first goal, that's when you saw Bamford's um, true ability on, on a footballing pitch come to fruition where he starts playing off, making the runs, tracking back. I think Bamford looked a lot happier once that goal had gone in. And the unselfish play to play it across to uh, Jack Harrison as well for the third goal was great by him. Whether you're going to really, really miss Rodrigo or not is yet to be seen because once he went off, he looked better. But uh, an injury to anyone is going to disrupt the team. And whether Rafinha's actually got a bad injury or not is yet to be seen. He's another player that if you are missing him and you end up having to play someone like Helder Costa, is going to cost... I think he'll cost you a few points. Hopefully he's back in time to before you play Spurs. But, um, yeah, I think Leeds today showed why they should be in the Premier League. And I think, was it Jamie Redknapp that said that you play chaos football? And you don't play chaos football. You play attacking football. You play football to win games. And just because not every Premier League team plays like that doesn't mean that you playing like that is wrong. So I think... Leeds are the most exciting football team to watch in the Premier League at the moment. And yeah, if if I were turning on the TV and there was a choice of four games and one was Leeds, I think pretty much nine times out of ten I'd pick that game. Um, my major question actually between the Lampard dismissal at Chelsea is, does this mean like... Scott Parker has had the rub at, at Fulham. It was there when they went down. He's brought them back up into the Premier League. And they've struggled at the start, but they're starting to get those wins. Is the mentality between Fulham or the bottom half of the table less than... Is it happier just to be ticking over and getting those wins than it is the top clubs and... I know Fulham haven't got the budget that Chelsea have got. Chelsea will splash the cash at all they want. If you wait until summer this season, um, at the end of this season, and watch Thomas Tuchel pick the players that he wants, he will. I mean, Abramovich will have no problem with throwing the checkbook at whoever or whatever Chelsea need at that point in time. But Fulham have also chucked the checkbook around a lot. They were the record team for spending when they came back up from the championship last time. I think they had spent over a hundred million, and they were the first team to do that and went straight back down. Some of those players are still at the club, but they're still not right, they're still not there or thereabouts. Yes, they have had some decent performances, they've got draws against uh Liverpool and Man City. And, 
Was it Man City? I don't think it was Man City, but they got a draw against Liverpool. I know that for sure. Um, might have been Spurs that they got off a draw against, but Scott Parker is finally getting a bit of results out of this team. And I just think the how cruel fo- football can be as a manager is a is quite harsh, and uh, I don't think Lampard has got the the veteran knowledge of how to deal with the criticism. We've seen it in uh, interviews where he sat back and they criticised how the team have played for that day or what players does he think um, are not performing. And he does the same thing as always, which is he takes it on the chin, says that it's his fault, but then throws his players under the bus. It can't have been a happy dressing room to be in. So... We'll see. We'll see if Lampard comes back um, as a manager for a different club at some point. But um, yeah, I think that'll do us for this episode of um, Stand Your Ground. Like I said, this is a really short one because I want to hear from people. I want people to tell me what they want, if they want more theme-based ones, because we had a real increase of people coming and watching when we did like the um, Streets Will Never Forget 11 which were it was fun to do it was fun to research and things and maybe people don't want to come and listen pe- to people talking about games that they've already seen is there a topic or like is there certain genres of football that you want us to go talk about is the pieces of, uh, that people don't talk about in podcasts that you want to hear about that's what this episode is all about i want people to come into the comments and tell me oh i'd like if you did a um Premier League 11 of the best African players to play in the Premier League or, you know, something something like that, something that's a bit different, something like the um, Streets Will Never Forget 11. It's something that um, has been on my mind recently. I've been trying to think about how we can switch SYG up and make it more entertaining, not just for the viewers, but for ourselves as well to produce because the, as much as football has been a coping mechanism for a lot of people during the lockdown with during coronavirus, um, it's also something that you've got you've got to find the pleasure in and find the enjoyment of being able to watch it and not try and just watch it for knowledge purposes, but to watch it for the entertainment factor. And I think that's kind of been lost whilst doing um, stand your ground. So I want to do this. In a different way, I want to get back to doing the the fun topic ones where people can come in and they can throw comments at it and say, and just get involved. Like we did the England worst eleven ever, and people came and they and they got involved and started asking people, like giving their names or their suggestions. I want SYG to become that. I want people to be able to come and it be a podcast where everyone just has a bit of a laugh maybe takes a stroll down memory lane and enjoys talking about football for an hour or so. But let me know in the comments below if there's any suggestions of videos or any suggestions of podcast themes that you want us to do, whether you want us to keep it like this or not. Maybe someone wants, there's people out there that want us to do a game roundup each week and tell and go through the games that have been through. But because of the amount of games that there are playing at the moment, each team basically playing twice a week. It's it's one of those things where it will get very boring. It will get very repetitive listening to that. So I'd rather switch it up. I'd rather people come and enjoy themselves when they come to watch this podcast. So like I said, let us know in the comments below. Um, I'm going to run a quick little video that's just going to show you the advertising for the buzz um, and all the live videos that go here on the buzz network and then uh we'll be signing off so check out this and make sure that you check out all the cool and exciting live videos on the buzz Tell them that's what we ready for more. Tell them that's what we ready for more. Bringing that to competitors. Do we see the confetti fall? Be ready for more. Tell them that's what we ready for more. Tell them that's what we ready for more. Bringing that to competitors. Do we see the confetti fall? Be ready for more. Tell them I'm ready, any opponent. The crown heavy, and every minute it's chosen. 
A path only fit for kings And you don't know what this court means What did you enlist for? If it isn't getting more rings Then you gon' have to switch your team uh, Trust me, it gets more mean I'm a nightmare going up against your dreams First step is explosive like a bomb hit Bet if I let it fly, I could not miss And you ain't got a chance at the top ten When you getting clamped all night by your locksmith On the block, throwing lobs to my top pigs I'm a chef, no look, what's the top dish? Tie game, through the pressure as the clock ticks Cross over, step back, hit a shot, switch Tell them that's what we ready for Tell them that's what we ready for Bringing that to competitors Do we see the confetti ball? Be ready for war This is how champions are made But it never happens in a day It's all hard work, but it's why What happens when we play? Nine out of ten times I'm a left yeah, that's what we're ready for, apparently. Uh, I don't know what wall we're going into, though. Podcast wall, maybe. Um, but, yeah, as always, make sure that you go over to manscaped.com and use code SYG2020 and get yourself 20% off and free delivery. And make sure that you go into the comments of this video or whether you go to the buzz uh, and message the buzz or even go over to Stand Your Ground or Twitter uh, and just let us know what you actually want to see live on these standard grounds whether you want themes or whether you want it to keep it as game roundups i want to do something that's going to be enjoyable for everybody to watch and something that's going to be enjoyable for us to um research and have a laugh with with the comments and have the people have that bit of interaction with each other so let us know in the comments below what you want make sure that you follow the buzz over on wtb.com that's on facebook youtube twitter and instagram um and make sure you follow me over on Armchair Wrestle One. We just did a live video yesterday um, where we gave away a free Armchair Wrestling hoodie. And it's the Royal Rumble tonight, so I'm pretty sure Armchair Wrestling will be back pretty soon after to uh, run down everything that takes place tonight's event. Uh, but that being said, uh, I've been your host, Alex. I hope. This is this has probably been a bit of a weird video for people to watch, especially seeing though it's just my face on the screen. And that's not enjoyable for many people is to just see my face. But I wanted to get this video out. I wanted to do this just by myself so that I could get people's reactions, people's comments, and see what people actually want on this show. Um but like I said, that'll do us for this episode. Uh do get in touch and I will see you on next week.